Fox Sports. We are platform. We are Florida. Back in Miami are the Marlins. The Nationals and the Fish open up the final homestand of the regular season for the Marlins. Marlins Park, where Martin Prado, Christian Yelich, and the rest of the Fish sit five out with 13 to play. Odds are not good, but the Marlins are still alive. They are a game under 500, and of course, Wei-Yin Chen is back on the mound. So a lot going on here tonight. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Preston Wilson. And first and foremost, Marlins are mathematically still in it, but obviously they're going to have to go on an incredible run to get there. And they face a big challenge with a Washington Nationals team that is a close to clinching the East. The Nationals have done extremely well in the NL East this year. The Marlins, they're still mathematically alive, and they're just hoping to catch fire, catch a little late season magic, Rich. The last time you and I saw the Washington Nationals, a lot has changed in baseball. Let's take a look. Ichiro's bobblehead counter was on display that day and he was well under 3000 Mets and Phillies had the wild card the Indians were way back the White Sox were a first place team Giancarlo was going hey way in Chen's on that list he was second on the team with three wins and Preston importantly the Marlins get him back tonight he's on an 80 pitch limit what should the fish expect from Wei in Chen. It's going to be tough because he hasn't really pitched in games. It's been simulated games, so you really don't know what the mound rust is going to be like. Hopefully, he'll throw strikes, and then when he gets to those two strike counts when he's ahead, he's got to bury pitches. He can't be too hittable in those counts. It's just nice to have him back. Last start was way back in July, and the lefty takes the mound against the Washington Nationals. Working John Carlo back in more an art form than just sending them off there and putting them on a lineup card. Don Mattingly will talk about it when we return. And yes, Stanton's in the lineup tonight.
is the presenting sponsor of Miami Marlins Baseball. In Miami tonight, Nationals are here. Three game set starts shortly. Let's go out to center field. Craig Minervini and Jeff Conine. All right, Rich, thank you very much. Good evening again, everybody. The Marlins will have Giancarlo Stanton back in the starting lineup. This will be his second start since returning from the groin injury. The Marlins are concerned about starting him and are hoping that he's going to get to that 90 to 100 percent level. Well, that's what the Don Manley said uh, the other day. He's like, I want to see what hit percentage he's at. And uh, you don't want to be a liability on the field. And uh, Don Manley felt that Giancarlo didn't quite uh, perform like he thought he might have as far as effort was concerned and it's not about effort I mean he tried to right but in the back of your mind after a, de uh, ev uh, a devastating injury like that as an athlete you say I don't want to push it too hard and re-injure anything where is he Don Manningly went over that a little bit with us today in his conversation with the media I thought the other day when he played he was going to be playing at like 90 percent and it looks more like 70 um, and you know so you're weighing it keeping him on the field not injury wise they don't they don't you know, medicals cleared him to be able to play um, but can he defend as good as Ichiro is he going to cost us runs out there uh, in, on defense and if he gets on can he score on a base hit does that cost us a run and so you weigh that with he gets an extra two at bats instead of getting one at bat and I he ends up getting three maybe four so that's kind of what you weigh of you know the positives and negatives. You know, John Carlos Sam was at first base on a, a Martin Prado double uh, there in Philadelphia, and he did not score. And Don Mattingly thought, "Hey, that's a game changer if he is able to score." Hey, Don Mattingly right now wants to win baseball games. He doesn't uh, care about getting players healthy. He wants to win. Yes. And uh, John Carlos Stanton, while going out there and being a presence in the lineup, wants him to be able to play 90 percent or above. All right, so we'll watch it tonight. But you will see Stanton probably again for six innings, depending on how the game goes. Three, maybe four at bats. If the Marlins are fortunate here in this ball game, should be a good series. Game one of three, the Nats and the Marlins. They played close games this year. Marlins have won six of the 13. Game number 14 coming up next. Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Ram. Get power you can depend on and Ram Power Days. By Southwest Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. Well, this is a place Wei and Chen hasn't been able to go to in about two months. Chen arrives on the mound. Third base. 
little so, help, a little help here, D. Gordon. You yeah, pull the, that out. I think the ground screw forgot something. That keeps the dirt from getting in the hole, and then you find the right fit, pop it on, and away you go. Now you got to get rid of that thing. Good work by D. Gordon. Tom Hallion out there to supervise. Let's do this. Nationals lineup brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. Trey Turner having a great campaign. Leading off, Jason Worth second. Anthony Rendon is third. Wilson Ramos is fourth. Ryan Zimmerman is batting fifth. Chris Heisey is playing right field batting sixth. Danny Espinosa is seventh. Wilmer Defoe is batting eighth. And A.J. Cole is in the ninth slot. Way in Chen. As we talked about, about an 80 pitch limit. Not sure how far that's going to get him, but just the fact that he's back on the mound is terrific news for the Marlins, who have had to endure a run of uh, injured starters and power bats. And it seems like just uh, just about everybody has trickled back with a few few still missing. Southwest Airlines brings you Miami's defense: Ozuna, Yelich, and Stanton. Justin Bohr, Martin Prado on the corners. And Chavaria and D. Gordon up the middle. And JT Real Muto is behind the plate. This lineup, take a look at it. For Don Mattingly is the opening night lineup. It's only the fourth time that the lineup has been together all year. That's tough. When you're, this is supposed to be your everyday lineup. And they've only been together four times all year? Yeah. Wow. Wei in Chen fires a fastball that misses down low. Trey Turner, Jason Worth, Anthony Rendon. And of course, Turner is a local kid. Park Vista High School up in Lake Worth. And man, Woo! is he lighting it on fire right now. Yeah, he's definitely opened some eyes, not just with his speed, but his bat. He's playing good defense as well. North Carolina State's where he played his college ball. And the Nationals pulled off quite a trade to get him in a three way deal with the Rays and the Padres. Dusty Baker happy that uh, Trey Turner was part of that deal. He's been a nice spark plug amidst some of the uh, struggling bats that uh, Dusty Baker has. One of those uh, not in the lineup, Bryce Harper. Harper getting the night off. And Daniel Murphy, who's not struggling. Let's get that straight. <laughs> I don't think he struggled since uh, yes. September of last season. Here's a 2 2. Turner fouls it off. Daniel Murphy is out with a sore buttock. That's the injury report. I just report the news, I don't make it. <laughs> oh, man. But he's hot. 14 game hit streak on the bench. And Chen gets a strike out of Turner. He's not done that much lately. Trey Turner. Oh, a nice start for Chen. Yeah, just really just threw that ball right by Turner. Jason Worth now. And of course, Worth, a uh, longtime nemesis of the Marlins in this division, whether a Philly or a National. This is his sixth year in D.C. I almost feel like you need to introduce everybody again because as we told you at the outset these two teams haven't seen each other since May 22nd. Chen throws a strike. Of the first 43 games of the season for the Marlins 13 were against the Nationals. And now they've got 106 games without seeing them. And a strike to Worth. Well, Worth is just doing his typical thing, seeing a lot of pitches. Good on base percentage. And a swing and a miss at a fastball. Way in Chen. You gotta like what you see so far. First two hitters, Turner and Worth. Two strikeouts. It looks like the ball is really getting on top of the right-handed hitters. I mean, we know he doesn't have high 90s velocity, but the ball seems to be getting on the hitters rather quickly. So 10 pitches in, two strikeouts. 
And here is Anthony Rendon. And Rendon pops the first pitch up. Shortstop, Danny Echevarria. Makes the catch. Way in, Chen, where have you been? Gordon ready to go. Marlins and Nationals are underway in Miami. Todd Mattingly's lineup. They got the band back together, Preston Wilson. It's brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. Where well, they got them together and hoping to catch a little late season magic. Magic. D Gordon's at the top. Marcelo Zuna, Martin Prado is third. Christian Yelich is in the cleanup spot. John Carlos Stanton is batting fifth. Justin Bohr is sixth. JT Real Muto is seventh. Adani Echeverri is eighth. And Wei Yin Chen is batting for the fish. AJ Cole out of Oviedo, Florida. Oviedo High School. Pitched for the Lions. That's uh, in Seminole County, northeast of Orlando. And Cole is one of the guys that has had to fill uh, gaps left by uh, injuries. Steven Strasburg uh, for one. Still, it's a really good rotation with names like uh, Max Scherzer, Tanner Roark. Gordon bangs that one into center. That's where Trey Turner plays. So one Florida guy to another. Nationals defense. Oh, look, the racing presidents in the Bobblehead Museum. Very nice. It's a nice touch. Southwest Airlines, Jason Worth. Hey, Trey Turner, middle infielder, so Moving him out to center made sense, and he's played quite well out there. Chris Heisey, the former Red, is in right. Zimmerman and Rendon on the corners. Love the beard from Espinoza. <laughs> Wilmer Defoe is out at second. Wilson Ramos behind the plates. And here is Marcelo Zuna in the two spot in this lineup for Don Mattingly. Giancarlo Stanton is fifth. Justin Bohr is slotted sixth. And so. To find a home for Ozuna, Mattingly has him in the two spot. Fastball in to Ozuna. Marlins a win yesterday, a 5 4 win in Philly. Big hit, of course, was Yelich's two run homer to tie it. Real Muto had an infield hit to drive in the Eventual winning run. Stanton and Bonds chatted up. Prado on deck. 1 2 to Ozuna. 91 mile an hour fastball is fouled back and out of play. Have you ever been to Oviedo, Florida? I have not. Sounds like a lovely place. Home of the Lions. Mark Bellhorn was from there. Bellhorn, okay. Here's a one-two. 
Ozuna fouls it back. And for you football fans, Blake Bortles. Call uh, call Jessica Blaylock. <laughs> Blake Bortles of uh, Central Florida in uh, Jacksonville fame. Quarterback for the Lions. Cole with a one two. His fastball zips in. So far, the Marlins have been pretty aggressive, trying to get after Cole early in the count. Liner into right field, sinking and caught on a tumbling catch by Heisey. Well, a nice play in the right. Robs Ozuna of a hit. Uh, sinking liner. Heisey gets a good jump on it. Makes the play. Watch it almost come out of the top of his glove. Yeesh. Stayed in. Heisey getting the start in right. As we noted, Bryce Harper the night off. So two line drives to the outfield. Here's Prado. And he takes a strike. That's Dan Bellino calling balls and strikes. Stu Surewater is the umpire at first, the rookie ump. Tom Hallion over at third. It looks like Phil Cuzzy out at second. Count one and two. Well, Cole has thrown a few really good sliders with good movement, good angle on them. Sinker slider. Prado hits that one to center. Turner tracking it. And Trey Turner makes the catch. Marlins with three balls into the outfield. This one's underway and scoreless. Está disponible en español a través del SAT y es presentado a ustedes por Kendall Toyota y West Kendall Toyota. Scoreless ball game. It's the second. It's the Nationals and the Marlins. Opens up a three-game series. Nationals with the magic number of six trying to uh, clinch the East. But they've dropped two of three against Atlanta. And you've got Miami desperately trying to get hot and stay hot. Wilson Ramos, Ryan Zimmerman, and Chris Heisey. And Ramos pokes one into right field for a hit. So it's a uh, Chen Cole matchup tonight. Tomorrow night, Jose Fernandez and Tanner Roark. 
and you can enjoy big discounts with the Steals and Deals ticket offer. Discounted tickets in most seating categories. 7-10 start. Marlins.com for tickets. Here's Jose Fernandez. And here is Ryan Zimmerman. Zimmerman coming off a, a season in which he played just 95 games last year, 106 games, and he's not had a great season. Dusty Baker, the bat whisperer, so to speak, trying to get Zimmerman going. Chopper, Prado's way. Out there, Gordon's turn, out there. And Wei and Chen erases two. Zim just smothers that ball. Prado right there on the spot gives a great feed to D. D turns it around, completes the double play. Nice and clean. And here comes Heisey. As uh, just about everybody else in baseball, the Nationals are absolutely loaded on their bench and in their bullpen. Washington opens this series with 15 guys in their pen 15 arms in their bullpen right now stop action look at Wei and Chen little tapper real Muto calls and makes the play and Wei and Chen looks exceptionally sharp in his return to Miami's rotation. And Fish Fox Sports is proud to team up with Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes and better people by working to provide all youth and high school athletes a positive character building sports experience. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more. Christian Yelich, who is building an outstanding season. It's a fastball for a strike. Giancarlo Stanton, Justin Bohr to face A.J. Cole. Barry Bonds was talking about Yelich today and how proud he is. Frank Manichino and Bonds have done terrific work, and Yelich himself. Bonds said Yelich is such a smart hitter. Does not panic, does not get overwhelmed. I remember talking to Frank Minichino last year about Yelich, and you could see that the, the power was in there. This year, 
that power has been unlocked and unleashed. Hmm. That's strike three calls. I think Yelich thought it was coming in high. Dambolino let him know where it was. See Ramos there setting up inside. He wants it up and in. And he hits it right there on the spot. That's exactly where he wanted it, right? That's at the letters, plenty of the plate. Stanton sees a breaking ball. It feels like for Stanton's early at bat since he's come back, it's back to the let's see if he can hit a slider before you throw him much else. Well, the slider and that pitch. They try to see how far in he's going to chase because when Stanton's going poorly, he chases the ball off the plate inside and he'll go a long ways in. See the shift by the Nationals. That's just good pitching right there. First pitch slider went in with the fastball and then away with the fastball on the same line as that first slider. Then he threw the slider off the line of that fastball. And you can see Ramos was a very good receiver. He was actually set up way off the plate and that's where that slider. Ended up. I do like that Stanton's looking at the pitcher with both eyes now. I said it earlier in the season I didn't think he was looking with both eyes at the pitcher. Now you can see both eyes. Actually facing the pitcher. Fastball just missed in. Cole flinched. He thought he had a strike. It was a close pitch. Well, Stanton tracked it well. He saw it as a ball. And it was. Oh, my God. Blasted to left. Deep and gone. Way <laughs> it either went through or over the Budweiser sign atop the Budweiser bar. Man, he can put a charge on a baseball like no one else. This is just a do nothing hit me slider. See that rotation on just sits there and spin. It doesn't go anywhere. And Stanton shows you what happens to hanging sliders. They go a long way, especially when he hits it. I think he knew it right off the bat, Rich. Yeah, he had that look of disdain on his yeah. face. Now let's see where this thing ends up. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Out of frame. Let's see if it gets over the sign. Yes. Yes. Over the whole bar. It cleared the whole bar out there. Wow. You're supposed to be safe out there, man. <laughs> no, that's where we're going to be on Saturday, actually. We're well, that that would that would fly right over us, though. Right, we're going to be actually on the Budweiser balcony, just right. to the left of that 427 sign. We're going to call the game from out there, right there. That will be our vantage point. Should be interesting. Four right. takes in. So Stan hits his 26th. Miami has a 1 0 lead. And a high pop. So that's 427. We'll be set up where that uh, group is on the balcony. And Stanton's ball went way up and over that Budweiser sign. Landed behind it. Whether it hit the back rolling window or not, we're not sure yet. But I'm sure Craig will be out there to get an eyewitness account. Four on his way down to first. Statcast has 448. Now, Hit Tracker Online is also another source for home run distance. That usually takes a little while before they come out with their distance, but we'll keep our eye on that.
So Boers at first. And here's Real Muto. JT got to the ball game late yesterday. And his infield hit down the third base line. Drove in the fifth run in a 5 4 win. JT just finds a way to impact the game. Somehow. Watch behind the B. Wow. Whoa. That looks like someone caught that yes. on the fly. Look out. Fastball got away. And it bends real Muto back. So our investigative reporter Craig Minervini is on his way out there, but it looks like a fan actually caught that ball behind the Budweiser bar. Two one. Is a strike. <laughs> Auto Nation brings you the scouting report for AJ Cole. Well, in 2016 with the Syracuse Chiefs, which is a Triple A affiliate, the Nationals, 22 games started. 8-8 eight eight record with a 4.26 ERA. No orange and green committed to University of Miami and his traveling buddy got traded from Oakland with Gio Gonzalez and Blake Trinan. Yeah, he actually got traded twice to Oakland in the Geo trade. And then to Washington in a three-team deal with Oakland and Seattle. Finds himself in the rotation of a team trying to clinch a division. Here in the last two weeks, Real Muto to right. Heisey lines it up and makes the catch. And here is Echeverria. As we noted, the Nationals without Murphy and Harper in the lineup. And they have some familiar names as uh, bench players and bullpen guys. I mean, 15 relievers, 20 pitchers total. Etch bounces it to short, and the Nationals get that out. But the Marlins get a run. Too bad Dontrell Willis wasn't here to narrate that one. There goes that man again. Way, way out of here. Is that one? Giancarlo Stanton is 26th. A slider that didn't slide, and he blasted it over the Budweiser bar in left center field. 
So Wei and Chen is back to work. He's faced the minimum through two. Danny Espinoza, national shortstop. Wilmer Defoe, switch hitting second baseman. And then A.J. Cole, those are your national hitters in the third. Dusty Bakers, Washington Nationals. Of course, uh, Baker trying to get to the postseason. He took the Giants there, he took the Cubs there, and took the Reds there. All for a uh, for a manager that's had just a, a really fascinating career in Major League Baseball. This is his 21st year as a manager in the big leagues. He spent 19 years in the big leagues as a player, and he was a good one. Two-time All-Star, appeared in three World Series with that uh, World Championship Dodger team in '81. Baker was a great Atlanta Brave to start his career. He was on deck when Aaron hit 715. It's reported that when he went to Los Angeles, he invented the high five. Two balls, two strikes. And he got him. Tell you what, Wei Ed Chen looks really good tonight. Three strikeouts. We check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Rich, if you're going to catch your ball like the one Stan hit, you have to have a game plan, almost a professional ball catcher. Joe Scherer from Fort Lauderdale did just that. Joe, tell me what you were doing. Sure. I was standing here near the battery charger, and when John Carlo came up, I was watching his hole at bat. I'm always up here every time he comes up, and Start I've been doing this for five years. Right. Anyway, at the crack of the bat, I knew it was going to come up here, and I knew it probably had a chance. running? Yes, running. All right, let's away. run. Let's do it. Running. You running? Go ahead. Trying to get a hold of the ball, and right here, I was fortunate to catch it. Right here. Right here we are oh, right. about five, eight, ten feet from the bar. Over the bar. And uh, my first catch, I've been doing this five years. I finally caught a John Carlo ball. But you've been waiting, you've been trying to oh, catch yeah. it. I'm up here every at bat. Every at bat. <laughs> now you were worried. Can we can you show this? Yeah, it looked like it might have hit the bug wire. Hit the B or anything, but I, I you have to keep a focus on the ball and Fortunately, I was able to catch it. So you did like a good outfielder. Preston will love that. You lost sight of the ball, <laughs> but then you picked it up again. Because it, did it go over the B part? It went over the B part, I believe. Unbelievable. But it finally got, well, show us the ball. What's, what's it like to catch that one? Oh, Let's see it, what it we can figure out where he started there. The middle of my glove, it felt great, like it always does in BP. <laughs> you know what's good, guys? After all these years, still gets a great <laughs> jump on the ball. That's good to see. <laughs> That's right. I do. Only because I have a lot of practice. I come to a lot of batting practice. And it's, it's great here at the ballpark, because uh, not only for fathers with their kids, but yeah. just to come to the, B, the ballpark for BP, and hopefully someday your boy will catch a ball, too. All right, Joe once caught Griffey's 600th homer in the other ballpark, he tells me, guys. Wow. Back to you. How about that? T. Gordon with a nice catch. Flips it to Stanton. So that Giancarlo Stanton home run. Saturday night will be right down there Right on the balcony, we will call the game from there. And so I, it sounds like we better be bringing gloves. Yes, I, I think we might need them, Rich. Wilmer Defoe pops out, and here's AJ Cole. What have you seen from Wei In Chen so far? He looks like he's got a lot more deception right now. I don't know if he's hiding the ball better. And I, I'd be uh, interested to hear what Juan Nieva says about if there were any tweaks with his delivery or how he's hiding the ball. But the ball seems to be jumping out of his hand. It seems to be getting on hitters. They don't seem to be picking up as well.
July 20th was his last start in Philly. Two and two. Of course, uh, Chen and the Nationals have a history. This is his sixth start against him, and only his second as a Marlin because the Nationals and the Orioles, uh, Chen's old team, play each other in interleague. That's one of those rivalry games. The Beltway battle. Pop left center Yellich streaks in and he makes the catch. Way in Chen has faced the minimum, giving up one hit through three. Your coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Hanley is just red hot right now. Terry Collins and the Mets can't stop winning. And Alex Reyes shut out the Giants. Here tonight, it's Marlins and it's Nationals. Nationals magic number is at six. Marlins trying to get hot and stay hot. Preston Wilson, let's see the route this uh, guy took. Well, see, there's a guy in the blue shirt. He's actually behind the guy in the blue shirt. And you'll see him taking off. Look at him, right? Going back there behind the Budweiser bar. He's going to end up right under the B. I mean, he's way out there. You see him right under there. He's got the white shirt on. Watch him. And he gets the ball. That's doing some traveling. Well, having the presence of mind to run from one end of the sign to the other. And then, as Craig reported, he kind of lost sight of the ball and then tracked it again. Well, he played it well. Could this be tonight? That Wei Yin Chen. <laughs> Gets a hit. <laughs> It could be. Hey. I mean, he's got a bat in his hand. Forty five at bats in his career. And no hits. Now if you follow the Marlins there was a, a ground ball he hit earlier this year. That was ruled a hit initially but it was a. It was one of those where you knew it was going to end up being an error. Hmm. Struck him out but just to be safe. The Marlins took the ball out of play thinking hey this might be his first major league hit. And of course once they overturned the call he threw the ball back. <laughs> so he's 0 for 46 in his career. Yeah, that
that that righty on righty slider isn't doing him any favors tonight either. Gordon takes a breaking ball for a strike. D lined out to center. The Marlins hit two balls hard in that first. Gordon to center, Ozuna to right. The only uh, mistake that A.J. Cole has made was this slider to Stanton who hit it a country mile or close to 450 feet on Statcast. I'm going to guess though hit tracker online goes a little further than what was it 440 or 44. Be interesting to see. I'm always a little leery about it because sometimes I think balls go further than what the numbers say. 448, excuse me, was uh, stat cast on stand. Gordon with the count one and two. Slider that ran in and D got the head out, yanked it foul. Gordon is just starting to look like the D Gordon of last year. His hitting streak is at 10 straight. He's starting to steal bases. Defoe on to first. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. Wednesday series concludes and it's a Chevron crazy eight Wednesday. Fill your car up with Chevron with Tecron gasoline. Bring your receipt to the Marlins Park ticket office. You can choose between two Lexus Legends level tickets or one home plate box ticket for just 28 bucks. Oh yeah and that guy's throwing. Max Scherzer Tom Kohler. That's the matchup. On Wednesday. Scherzer is one of my favorite guys to watch pitch. I love his intensity on the mound. Ozuna center field. Turner has to turn and go after it. Not going to get it. It bangs off the wall. It bounces all the way back into center field. And Ozuna's going to get a triple out of this. When you go 407 feet to straightaway center, Preston, I guess as a former center fielder, you don't expect the ball to rocket right by you. Well, when you hit a ball like this and you see the center fielder just put his head down and start running, you know you pretty much mashed that ball pretty well. And that ball has no chance of getting caught. It was a rocket off the bat, and Trey Turner just did the best he could, just try to run and try to get back there. There's no chance for him to catch that ball. So an important at bat now for Martin Prado with two outs and Ozuna 90 feet away. <laughs> Prado enters play at 311. He flied to center. It is only at bat. Daniel Murphy of the Nationals is leading. The uh, National League just a percentage point ahead of D.J. LeMahieu. So they're both essentially at 348. Murphy's a few percentage points ahead. But there's a big drop off between LeMahieu at, and Murphy at 348 and Charlie Blackman at 321. And so Prado at 311 is tied for eighth. And Rio Muto at 312, and this is coming in his seventh. So two top ten hitters for Miami. Of course, uh, Murphy, as Preston noted, hasn't stopped hitting since last September. There's the pride of Jacksonville.
Two twos off the plate. Prado kind of leaned out to make sure it didn't catch the corner. And he walks him. So that'll bring Yelich up. With runners at the corners and an opportunity for Miami to add to this one nothing lead. Yelich is not the guy that you want to face when you're trying to work your way out of an inning. Because he's so patient, he has such good pitch selection. And now he's added power to that. In the dirt. His last four home runs have been hit in this direction. He does such a good job of letting the ball travel. Doesn't panic. He's not worried about getting beat. He lets the ball get deep in the strike zone, and he's got enough power, as we've seen, to hit the ball out of the ballpark to any part of the field. Yelich yeah, drives it left center field and deep and over the head of work. Off the wall, over the wall. You just saw that coming. You saw it come with the ball that Ozuna hit when you walked Prado. Christian Yelich is not the guy right now that you want to pitch to with men on base because he, he hits the ball everywhere. He's going to hit it wherever it's pitched. That ball is tailing away. He just stays on it and drives it. Nationals caught a break of that that ball was a ground rule double. And because of that, Prado has to stop at third. Seventh double for Yelich, who finds an awful lot of hits in left and in center. And here is Stanton now with runners second and third. Yelich a little closer to 100 RBIs as well now. He's at 94. And a 2 0 Miami lead. Buick, big matchup against the Nationals in 84 ball games, 27 homers. That's doing some work. That includes tonight. Fastball in, and it's 2 and 0. Yeah, he's seen the ball very well. Oh, Cole, you could tell by that fastball in that he took that was just off the plate, but he saw it as a ball out of Cole's hand, and that bought him that slider that he hit for the home run. Cole being careful, he's rather either going to be in or out. And Stanton has not offered at any of them. Justin Bohr's on deck. Ooh, 3 0 hack. Cole missed his spot because Ramos was set up almost outside of the strike zone on 3 0. Oh, yeah. Ball got a little bit too much of the plate. Almost got a little too much of the robo cam behind home plate. And with a swing and a miss. All right, 3 2. What pitch does he get? I'm saying he goes with a slider right here. First base open. Don't want to tee him up another one. Got a fastball, it looked like. 91? Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend that. No, I wouldn't. But maybe they're trying to just get him out of the inning, keep him from throwing too many pitches. But I guess also he just hit a slider almost 500 feet, so that's not really a great option either right now. Staying with the fastball. Yeah, they are. I mean, G seems to be really seeing the ball well tonight. The 
slider and a tapper to short. Remember Stanton not at 100 percent. And he's thrown out on his way down to first. But the Marlins add on. Triple by Ozuna. Double by Yelich. It's 2-0. Marlins live starts at 630 tomorrow night. Jose Fernandez Tanner Roark is very good as well. So that's a premium pitching matchup tomorrow. It's Wei in Chen tonight. And right now Wei in Chen is on it. There's a fastball at the knees to Trey Turner. Jason Worth Anthony Rendon will follow Turner. Strikeout victim back in the first. And he shoots one up the middle at Echeverria captures and he gets the out at first and we check in with Craig Benervini Craig well, Rich has been a long return back for Wei in Chen he's been on the disabled list retro to July 21st he told me the other day he feels better right now from that elbow strain and a, and a good feeling elbow they did all season long uh, even going back to spring training was the last time he said he felt as good as he did now he's worked his way back to starting he told us that for a while that all along he was building up his pitch count to start not to come back as a reliever now he had the time to do that but the most important thing was the health and today Don Manley talked about that saying it's real important for the Marlins for Chen uh, however many starts he gets here maybe two or three to finish up on a good note and a healthy note number one and obviously he wanted to get five strong maybe he'll go a little further depending on the pitch count here since he's so low uh, but good so far for Chen and all that points to his health too. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, three and a thirds into this one, he's given up just the single to Wilson Ramos. He has struck out three. He's worked quickly, effectively. Jason Worth takes a strike. Worth did not have a happy look on his face with that call. Counts two and one. There's the Ramos hit sitting in the middle of the Nationals' box score. Well, maybe this is what a healthy Wei Yin Chen looks like. He may have been bothered by that elbow throughout the season and just was kind of battling through it. But I see more deception. I see the ball really having life out of his hand right now. He just looks like a pitcher that's in command right now. His glove right in the glove of Echevarria who makes the play. Well, how about that? A 1-6-3 put out of Jason Worth. I mean, 
game, just making pitches. That's what Wei Yin Chen is doing right now. And when I say he looks like a, a pitcher who's in command, it's when someone isn't feeling like themselves, they, they throw pitches in there hoping to execute. He's throwing pitches right now knowing he's going to execute. You can just see it about him. Like, there's no hoping. It's got an idea, throw this pitch with conviction, and get it where I want to get it. Now Anthony Rendon. Rendon's been a hot hitter for the Nationals. A guy with a very uncomplicated swing. And that can do damage and Chen backdoor breaking ball. And it's one and two. And the quality of the strikes are just it's, it's tremendous tonight. Staying out of the big part of the plate staying down in the zone staying off the edges. And uncomfortable swings as well. Gordon on the first way and Chen has faced the minimum through four giving up just a single and a two nothing Miami lead. Baseball, Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Ram. Get power you can depend on at Ram Power Days. By Checkers, fast foodies know the deal. And by Warren Henry, now celebrating our 40th year as Miami's best luxury dealer. Marlins Park tonight. It's the Marlins and the Nationals. Barry Bonds, John Carlos Stanton in conversation. The Nationals are a first place team, 88 and 61. Magic numbers down to six to clinch in the East. AJ Cole. And he misses outside to Justin Bohr. That one foul back and out of play. Four swings and misses. EJ Cole, just twenty four. Center, that's Trey Turner tonight. And he makes the catch. Bronze have three hits. They're all for extra bases. A homer by Stanton, a triple by Ozuna, and Yelich with the RBI double. 
Oh, we spoke about it all year long. That's what extra base hits do. You don't have to get so many of them to score runs. String a couple together, you get yourself a couple runs. I mentioned earlier the hometown for A.J. Cole. It's actually pronounced Oviedo. I had the the member of the pitcher formerly known as Leo Nunez. Yes. J.C. Oviedo is how he pronounced it, but the town is Oviedo. Espinoza, Rio Muto beats it, and the throw kicks into the camera well. Zim has got to come off the bag and get that throw. He can't hang on the bag there. You, there's too much time elapsed. You know that JT Real Muto runs well. You can't allow that ball to go into the dugout. You just got to punt on this plate, come off the bag, smother the ball however you can. Yeah, you, you can't you can't do that. That's 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 just not good play. Yeah, that, that's actually going to go as an error on Espinoza, but. Yeah, Zim, uh, Ryan Zimmerman would probably be the first to tell you he's got to help his shortstop out. Yeah, that's that's doing the minimum right there. That's Espinosa is doing the best he can to try to make something happen. You got to help your shortstop out there. Come off the bag, get that ball, keep it in front. It's already a single. Don't turn it into anything more. Still. Uh, adjusting to the nuances of first base it's that old story everybody thinks if you've got a guy that's not great defensively you can just stick him at first base and that's not the case no uh, the, the, other than the pitcher and the catcher the first baseman handles the ball more than everybody else on the field I mean it's they're involved in a lot of plays a lot of put outs there's a lot of responsibility over there with bunt defenses Chabria takes a strike. This is a big at bat for Edge because Wayne Chen's on deck. Of course, Chen is 0 for life as a major league hitter. Where the uh, the pitcher formerly known as Leo Nunez is these days, <laughs> because he was with the Rays, right? I love that the pitcher formerly known as. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, let's do a search. Let's find him. Two two. Echeverria strikes out. No, Rich, you spoke earlier about how the Nationals have played well. This year under Dusty Baker World, they've played incredibly within the division with the unbalanced schedule. You play each team about 19, 20 times, and that's what they've done against these 48 and 22, as opposed to Marlins 27 and 36. That's riding your own destiny. Well, this would be a great time for Chen to get his first major league hit, right? Guy in scoring position. I have to agree, Rich. Count I, is I think at this one. point, any time's a good time for Chen to get his first hit now. <laughs> it's just not comfortable. Chen was on that pitch. When you foul a pitch straight back, Preston Wilson. Hey, confidence has got to be soaring right now. It's a good hack. O2. Slider and a tapper. Rendon at third. Whips it across and just gets Chen. Marlins leave that runner. Through four, it's 2 0 Miami.
Ram is the presenting sponsor of Miami Marlins baseball. The Magic City is all lit up tonight. As a team, everyone expects to clinch and march into the postseason as the National League East champs is in town. The Nationals are here. Magic number is six. Giancarlo Stan had a tape measure homer. Christian Yelich an RBI double and Wei in Chen looks uh, like he has turned back the, the way back machine. He has been dazzling tonight. And Chen gets Wilson Ramos Ryan Zimmerman and Chris Heisey. Don Manningly's ball club. As uh, we showed has had trouble against the National East and in particular the Braves. And the Phillies. Toyota brings you an inside look. The Nationals, on the other hand, have absolutely feasted on the East. Look at the run differential. Wow. They're, they're just a game over against everybody out of the East. Now, so let me ask you this, Preston Wilson. And they've done it against the, the teams in the East that don't have the best of records. So they've beaten up on the Braves and the Phils and have a advantage. They haven't beaten up on the Marlins, but they do have a winning record. So does that mean if they get into the postseason, they don't fare well in the postseason? I think they'll be fine because they have pitching. You know, whenever you have pitching, you got a chance in the postseason. You know, and they do have some high caliber offensive weapons. Uh, Rendon is getting healthy or is healthy now. Daniel Murphy. Jason Worth seems to come up with big hits at the right time. Ramos to center. Yelich makes the catch. I haven't had a chance to ask you about Christian Yelich in center field. Last year he played there, but it seems like he's embracing that role this year. The Marlins like his gap to gap speed. What do you see? Because you played the position. I see that he's taken the same routes that he took in left field, which is one of the reasons why he won a gold glove in left is that his routes were so good, so direct to the ball, and he's just applying it in center field. He's got those long loping strides, which helps him eat up that ground out there, makes it look effortless when he's running down balls because he's not really trying hard. It's just those nice, long, easy strides that get him there. And I like it. I like him in center field. One of the interesting things that uh, Don Mangley said to me the other day is that they're working on Yelich's throwing and trying to speed up his release. Here's the one one. And much like we talk about Rio Whee! Muto ironing out catching, Yelich was a high school first baseman and didn't start playing outfield until he got to, into the minor leagues. And Manley feels like the arms uh, plenty strong. It's it's the release that if they can just iron it out and quicken it up. Yeah, he does have a uh, a slow throwing motion, and but that can be worked on. That that starts at his feet. Get his feet moving correctly. The arm will get out and catch up. There's tons of drills that an outfielder can do to. Get that arm there in time and start quickening it up a little bit. He's got he's got everything you need to be a good outfielder. I'm sure he'll iron that out as well. That one in the left center field, the hit. Zimmerman around first. Yelich picks it up. And the Nationals have their second hit of the ball game. Chris Heisey comes to the plate. By the way, Leo Nunez or J.C. Oviedo. Last pitch with the Rays in 2014. Pitched in the Dominican Winter League in 2015, but I can't find any trace of him here in 16. So my baseball historian, John Chimchuk, came up with the same data. So. I don't know if uh, J.C. Oviedo has ever been to the city of Oviedo, Florida. 
home of AJ Cole. Uh, these are some important at bats for Heisey to get more than one at bat in a game. Uh, Dusty finding a way to get his reserves in because those are you're going to need those guys in the playoffs. There's a lot of pitching changes. There's a lot of double switches that go on a lot of big pinch hits that are going to be needed. You got to get these guys at bat somehow. You saw Matt Latos in the Nationals bullpen. He is one of the cast of thousands that the uh, Nationals have Latos. Really a disappointment with the Marlins. Fifteen relief pitchers. Fifteen guys in that bullpen. I wonder if they've had to bring in extra seating. Oh, oh. Well, I think there's a pecking order out there. You know, it's all the new young guys. Oh, they, and, and Mark Zepchinski's out there as well. There's the front terrace level. And then the back row. You see all those empty seats? They won't let them sit there, Rich. That's you got to earn those spots. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach of the Nationals. Heisey fouls that pitch off of him. <laughs> There's like four empty seats there. And they just push all the young guys to the back. And that back row, too. I mean, there's two levels to the, uh, the seating at the back. A whole lot of young blood out there sitting in the back row. End of the bat, it's going to float over Gordon into center. Zimmerman around second on his way to third. Yelich's throw offline, but Chen is backing it up. Good play by Wei in Chen, and it holds Heisey at first base. That's a classic example of why a center fielder has such difficulties throwing. That's a great pitch just off the edge. Heisey does a good job getting the bat on it. Just lofts it out over the infield just enough to get him a knock. But watch Yelich coming into that pitcher there. The hardest thing about center field is you're hardly ever going in the same direction as you're throwing. So he's actually coming in towards second base at that angle. Now he's got to get situated, square his shoulders and feet up to go to third base and right there he doesn't get him squared up and that ball just took off on him. And the Nationals have their biggest threat here. Danny Espinosa the switch hitting shortstop is the batter. Nick Wickren in Miami's pen. Chen is at 60 pitches 80 is kind of the uh, top end. For a guy that's jumped back into the rotation. Throwing uh, simulated games or in baseball parlance sim games and not pitching in the minor leagues because well the minor leagues have been dark now for almost two weeks. Middle infield looks for two Heisey at first Zimmerman at third. Good changeup starts the at bat of Espinosa. Chin at 61 pitches right now, 42 strikes. Breaking ball in. And it's a ball and a strike. Marlins tonight are big fans of the Rockies, of the Dodgers, and of the Braves. The Dodgers host the Giants. That at Dodger Stadium. 10 o'clock Eastern starts. The Rockies host the Cardinals, 840 Eastern. So that's about uh, 15 minutes away. Another good changeup. And finally, it's the Braves who are in New York to face the Mets. That game's top four. And Atlanta just added two runs and has a 5 0 lead. Well, you can definitely tell they're trying to stay away from the fastball with Espinosa. Sliders and changeups, 
try to stay away from the number one and make him chase. Does he double up on the changeup here? He can throw whatever he wants here as long as it's a changeup or a slider. I would say he threw that pitch to set up a changeup right now. Get the fastball up and in. Right now would be a great time for a changeup down and away. Spot. I think Espinosa was thinking along with you and, and was expecting it. Well, I'm, once you see enough at bats and once you understand how a guy is pitching, after your first couple of bats, you get a feel for how he's trying to get you out. Espinosa is equal to career high with 21 homers this year. Counts full. Drills it, left field, deep, Ozuna, and it's gone. And now he has a new career high, 22 homers on the season for Danny Espinosa. That's a three-run shot in all of Chen's good work to the first four and a third. Sails out of the ballpark, and it's 3-2 Nationals. I really don't know why they elected to go fastball there. You've, you've done all that work to get him on the off-speed stuff, and he's shown that he just want to swing at it if it's close enough. I mean, I think you just got to stick with your guns right there. There's a 3-2 count. Stay with how you tried to get him out. Hmm. It's a shame to see Chin leave down 3-2 with the game that he's pitched. Nick Wickren comes in. Kendall Toyota call to the pen. 3 2 now, Nationals. A blast to left. And just like that, Wei and Chen's night is over. Four and a third. Four hits, three runs. Didn't walk anybody, and he struck out three. So Don Manning was into his bullpen early. Wilmer Defoe. Pitch misses in. You've got AJ Cole on deck. And 
Latos continues to throw in the Nationals pen. And Cole is replaced in the on deck circle. Ben Revere. And so it looks like it's going to be a former Marlin. Matt Latos will tap her up the first base line and it's foul. Wilmer Defoe hanging tough count two and two Wickren. Has shown signs this year that the Marlins uh, like to see. Count four, three, and two. Former closer in the minor leagues and at Purdue. Smacked into right center. Chasing Yelich into the gap. And he bobbles it on his way to second is Defoe. And that bobble costs the Marlins 90 feet of real estate. Good hustle by Defoe. Yeah, he was going hard right out of the gate. You know, these are opportunistic plays. You're going hard, hoping for something like this to happen, and you just keep going and get yourself to second base. Yeah, that's just a bobble right there. Just uh, it's going to be a hit and an error. Well, he's going right out of the box. He's thinking something might happen here, and look at him. He was ready. And I think that Woo! hesitation is why Yelich was charged with an error. When he rounded first and then hesitated and then accelerated. Yes. Pitch Penny welcomes Ben Revere. Prado on to first. So both managers are into their bullpen now. And it's going to be Matt Latos who takes over in the bottom of the fifth. Here's Turner. Over the middle. Turner can run. Etch. That's a terrific play. Had to spear a short hop and then. Throw on the run to get the swift Turner. 3 2, though, Nationals lead it.
Danny Espinosa home run a big one. Let's do some Geicoing shall we. Cameron Maben on this date 2008 went four for five. Tied the club record. With hits in eight consecutive at bats. Gary Sheffield and. I don't recognize that other name. Some some uh, Peterson Williams. Is Pre that what it says. Preston <laughs> Wilson. Do you remember that eight uh, eight at bats eight hits. I do actually remember that. Yeah. What were you. Uh, I mean you obviously were in the zone right. It was just one of those good stretches where I was getting good pitches to hit. I was picking good pitches to hit and uh, putting good swings on. Them. All right. What have you seen tonight uh, that's uh, caught your eye in this one. Long Stanton Homer. Then ill fated fastball to Espinosa. Yeah I, I thought Chen pitched very well. You, you could probably see a little bit of fatigue showing in that last inning. Uh, still threw the ball well. Heisey hit a ball that was off the plate for a knock and that extended things. And yeah Espinosa just waited out the at bat long enough and finally got him a fastball to hit. Matt Latos who was a Marlin last year. Remember the Marlins uh, signed Latos going into last year and then traded him in July as part of a three team trade. Sent Mike Morse with him to the Dodgers. The Dodgers released him before the postseason. Ended up signing with the Angels and then signed with the White Sox as a free agent going into this year. The White Sox released him. In mid June, and the Nationals signed him on the 29th of June. Throws a strike to D. Gordon, and it's three and one. And Latos with the Nationals has made a start. This is his fourth uh, relief appearance, third relief appearance. Hey. And the count three and two to Gordon. Did not have a great uh, run with the Marlins. Four and seven, ERA of 4.48. Traded after 16 starts. Gordon knocks one to left field. Worth in pursuit. Catches up, makes a catch. Well, the Nationals drop two of three to the Braves. But uh, on track to a clinch and win the East. Although if uh, Dusty Baker had his way, they'd do it quickly and keep winning and make sure they had home field in at least the first round. Toast, of course, uh, nearby Coconut Creek. Where well, it gives you that good downward tilt, that high over the top delivery. It presents a tough angle for a hitter. He really had some nice years in San Diego and in Cincinnati. Two and two. Cubs 94 wins, Nationals 88 wins, Dodgers 84 wins. That's the hierarchy in the National League among the division leaders. Well, winner with the Cubs. Nationals lead is eight over the Mets. 
and the Dodgers lead is five over the Giants. And as I noted the uh, Giants and the Dodgers are playing tonight Dusty Baker's old team as a player the Dodgers old team as a manager the Giants. There's your East. There's your West. Central's already been decided. We put that to bed. I think next year the Marlins have to be hopeful. Because what are the odds of you losing your two, three, and four starter next year and losing three, the four heart of your lineup? Three, four, and five hitter? Yeah. Letos with a breaking ball and he strikes out Ozuna. Interact all game long tomorrow night. Hey kids, it's Twitter Tuesday. Emails and tweets driven by your South Florida Ford dealers. Our good friends at South Florida Ford. And it's our annual best tools in baseball show. Hashtag will be uh, best tools. Baseball America does that every year. Uh, Every year they put on the uh, asking all uh, managers, coaches, and a variety of people who's got the best throwing arm from the outfield, who has the best power, best speed, who has the best outfit among broadcasters. Preston, you've been in that category consistently now for the last five, six years. Well, thanks, Rich. I try to bring whatever I can to, you know, narrowly, narrowly losing to Vince Scully last year. Vin always in a blazer and seemingly a yellow tie pocket square. <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do. <laughs> Shaking out the hair like Harper. That one gets by Diving Rendon. And Prado shoots it into the corner. Worth retrieves it. Martin Prado with double number 35. And Miami with a two out hit. No one in baseball has more hits with two strikes than Martin Prado. That's number 80 this year. That's amazing. That is tough. He's just worked his approach so consistently that he never gets outside of himself. He's not up there trying to go for the home run. That's almost half of his hits. He's got 176. Yelich now. Struck out in the second. RBI double in the third. This is his first at bat of the night against Latos. Four innings of A.J. Cole. Miami managed two against him. On four hits. Two and all. Right now, Latos has to decide whether he wants to try to go after Yelich or pitch around him now that you've fallen so far behind and just go after Stan. Yelich chopper to first. Zimmerman flips. Latos is there. And the Marlins strand that double at second. Five innings in. 3 2, Washington.
Great work in the truck from the world's most dangerous tape room. Tonight, the Nationals and the Marlins opening a three-game series. Two key home runs, a long one by Stanton and a three-run shot by Danny Espinosa of the Nationals, and a 3-2 Nationals lead. The hard throw and a right-hander. Oh, well, we got a lot of Florida guys in this uh, ball game tonight. Brian Ellington is another one. Ellington gets Jason Worth, Anthony Rendon, and Wilson Ramos. Slider, Prado backing up, and it kicks off of his glove. Worth, <laughs> I like that. Strong turn, and rather than hit the brakes, he just does a little pop-up slide. Davey Lopes approves. This ball had some nasty top spin on it. You see it actually pick up speed after it hit the ground. That's old school, Preston. <laughs> That's right. Anthony Rendon now is over two. Doing a good second half, and a guy that the Nationals, I don't want to say they were a little concerned with, but Rendon just 80 games last year, a knee injury, an oblique, hit just five home runs. Of course, 2014, he was third in the MVP voting. He's a talented player, man. This one Prado has Gordon turns there's the double play. Prado gives such good feeds. at second base. I mean he really sets up the double play that that ball hit D Gordon right in the chest. Tell you what, Prado's used to hitting the target. And I'll tell you where you see that. You see that before batting practice. When he and Miguel Rojas play catch, they don't play catch as two infielders playing catch. They play catch as pitcher and catcher. They'll take turns being the pitcher or the catcher. And they'll squat down, they'll put the target out. Rojas and Prado, they'll imitate some of the Marlin pitching motions. Ramos to center. Yelich to the track. And he makes the catch. And Brian Ellington, a scoreless sixth.
six. John Carlos Stanton leads it off. Put down a deposit on a 2017 season ticket. It guarantees you access to the 2017 All-Star Game in Miami. Don't miss your chance to secure seats for all the All-Star Week activities. Deposits start at just 250 bucks. 1877 Marlins. Go to Marlins.com slash season tickets with Preston Wilson and Craig Minervini, who actually got some aerobic exercise earlier in the telecast. A little jog for Craig in left field, tracking the Giancarlo Stanton home run. And it's Stanton here. His first at bat against Latos. Yeah, so that gentleman went from charging his phone at the charging station to running behind the bar, the length of the bar, getting behind that big B on the Budweiser sign, and caught it right under there. There he is, watch. Craig getting his workout in, a little cardio. Reenacting the scene. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It's down low. Now, Saturday night is a special night for a lot of reasons. It's Star Wars night, and we will be broadcasting the game from out there. He's, he's out there thinking about another one. Right there where those two gentlemen are sitting, we will be calling the game. And so we invite you to come by and say hello on Saturday night. We'll be on that lower terrace. You can be above if you want to throw snacks to us. Just not at us. <laughs> we will bring our, well, we'll bring gloves. And you can come down and say hello. We need something to give to the people, Preston. We do need something, we Rich. We need to, to get in uh, into, like, the uh, Fox Sports Florida closet that has got all the cool stuff. Stanton comes out. Jeffrey Perez is going to run. And so the Marlins make no bones about this. Perez still has that uh, broken thumb, so he can't hit, but he can sure run. And he dives back in. Don Mattingly said before the ball game, the plan with Stanton was just like it was his last start. Get him three or four at bats and then get him out as he's still testing that groin and getting back to full speed. Well, there's a couple things that have to happen when you have an injury like Stanton had. First thing is you got to get medical clearance. So when the doctors say, look, it's fine, it's healthy, then it's up to the player to actually trust himself just letting go. See a lot of guys when they have an injury like that, they they just they that injuries in the back of their mind, so they won't really want to put out that full out pit. Bohr is gonna bunt against the shift. Rendon to first, he beats it. How about that? I love it. Terrific yeah. stuff from Justin Bohr. Speed kills, baby. Speed kills. Rendon made a really JD. nice play. There's the shift. And this just shows you it doesn't even have to be a good butt. This is not a good butt, but he just got it away. Rendon has too much ground to cover going towards third base. Hey, you just got to get it on the ground. That's it. Remember, he still has a somewhat of a, a tender ankle. I love it. That's a. Hey. If you're going to play that shift and you're going to give him that single, then you just be prepared to take it when he gets it. Because how, how long have we been working on that graphic? <laughs> <laughs> so first bun hit for Bohr. And Latos gets a visit from Mike Maddox. Bullpen for the Nationals is busy. Remember, as I noted earlier, the Nationals have 15 pitchers in their bullpen. Yeah, this is when the game starts to uh, slow down in September, when the bullpen start getting in action, because it's it's almost an unlimited well of pitchers you can go to. Look at them. I mean, some teams don't send that many guys to a spring training road game.
Real Muto bunts and then guides it foul. Now, from the looks of it, Real Muto was bunting for a hit. And in the worst case scenario, move a couple guys up. I don't think he was asked to bunt or in the process of trying to sacrifice. Derek Dietrich is in the dugout with a bat. Hey. And Remuto takes the strike. Great pitch. Perez at second, board first. Jeffrey on very, very closely at second base. Real Muto, it's caught by Zimmerman, safe. Board just gets back in. Rio Muto did a great job of driving that pitch down the line. And Bohr just got back in to avoid the double play. It's a great reaction by Justin Bohr. You could very easily get doubled off on that if you get caught leaning towards second base. Held his ground, saw the ball, and then broke back. See that? I mean, that's. He was breaking back before Zimmerman actually was going back to going towards first base. Marlins are going to hit for Echeverria. And then they're going to hit for the pitcher if that at bat comes up. And Dusty Baker figures that's enough for Matt Latos. He's got Trinan in the bullpen. So Dietrich's been announced. Each row's on deck as well. Trinan is a right hander. Latos exits with runners first and second. Kendall Toyota called to the pen. Marlins threatening with one out here in the sixth. Wheels turning in both dugouts. Like Trinan, much more of a uh, a regular out of the bullpen for the Nationals than Latos has been. You can see his numbers are good. A 2-3-0 ERA. Trinan's been part of Dusty Baker's eight team out of the pen. Derek Dietrich now. See his numbers of late six game streak eight hits in those six games. You got blazing speed at second 
And Jeffrey Perez. Justin Bores at first. And Zimmerman playing behind him. And it goes in. Ichiro is on deck. Hard sinker, upper 90s. And the guy gets a lot of double plays. If I'm Dietrich right here, I'm looking middle in, about thigh high right now. Because trying his best pitch is that sinker, like you said. So when he gets it on the first base side, it straightens up a little bit. And when he gets it up, it loses the sink. And that's going to be your best pitch to drive off a guy like this. Drives it to center. Turner in. Now over his head. Oh. Perez, the wall. Perez around third. He'll score. Bohr is rumbling to third. He'll hold there. And the Marlins have tied it. Boy, he drove it to center. Yeah, he, well, he got half of what you want in that situation. Keep the ball in the middle of the plate. In. He got the ball in the middle of the plate and he drove it out to center field. That's an RBI double for Dietrich. That's just a good job of hitting. The ball is down at the bottom of the strike zone, but he was prepared for that pitch when he got it and he drove it. Trey Turner just got blistered on that play. And this ball is hit hard. And so here is Ichiro now. Bohr at third, Dietrich at second. Ichiro has had a, obviously a terrific year, but this is not a spot that he's been successful in. And that is runner at third, less than two outs, getting him home. He's at 35%. That's a swing. Tom Hallion with the call. He throw in a little bit of disbelief and it's 0 1. Here's a look. I'd say that's a swing. I think it is too. But 13 pitch hits. Pitch hitting here. Infield is in. Trying to buries that one. It's a ball and a strike. There's a high fastball at 96. Well, you got one up in the zone. That's the one you got to pull the trigger on. You just missed it. Caught the bat and then bore back to third. Remember, the inning opened with a stand and a walk. And that was against Matt Latos. Bohr then bunted down the third base line for a hit. Question, Rich, you think Bohr is going on contact right here? No. That one in the air and foul. My only reason for saying that he's I don't know that he's running at 100 percent and his 100 percent isn't great to begin with. Infields in what do you think your opinion holds a lot more weight than mine. 
I mean, I think basically you're just trading base runners if you get him thrown out and you got. Well, there's your answer. He's coming home. The throw, it's wild, and he scores. Uh, Dietrich caught up at second, now in a rundown. And he's tagged out. But the Marlins get the run and lead it 4 3. Uh, that was the point. If, if you're going to send him on contact, both players have to be moving. I, I don't know. But Dietrich lost sight. He never looked at Bohr. Yeah. Yeah, if, if Bohr's going on contact, you got to be moving with him. Great job by Bohr. Look at the secondary lead and the jump. Yes. That's terrific stuff. He may not be fast, but he's a good base runner, and he showed it there. You don't have to be fast to be a good base runner. You just have to be alert and play things out in your head before they happen. Nitro chase back on a throw, and, and it may, like right now, Don Mattingly debriefing at Derek Dietrich. Two outs. Gordon fouls it. Now watch Dietrich in this replay. Watch his head. It follows the ball right to second. But it's almost like he didn't know that Justin Bohr was going on contact. It's he follows the ball, but he. Well, that's my point. He, he, you gotta you gotta watch the runner in front of you. Because ideally you want that play to go to third base like you want to take off and hopefully they throw to third and don't even attempt to go home. So that's why if the guy is in front of you when you got second and third. If that guy in front of you ahead of you is, is moving you need to be moving as well. Very similar to what a, a runner at first runner at second guy at second breaks for third right on a stolen base. Hey. Gordon takes a breaking ball. And the count 0 and 2. Miami has the lead. Dietrich tied the game with his RBI double. And Ichiro gets an RBI on the ground. Grounder out to a default at second. It's one and two to Gordon. Nitro hasn't budged from first. Gordon lines it foul. Think a couple things on that trip around the bases for Justin Bohr. The heads up to get back at first base on the line drive to Zimmerman. That could have been a double play. It all started with a heads up play by Bunning to third and then getting that great secondary lead and jump on the Etro ground ball. Trying and strikes out Gordon, but Miami strikes for two. Headed to the seventh. It's 4 3 Marlins.
seven. Some substitutions to tell you about, but before we get there, we're going down to Craig Minervini. Craig? Well, Rich, September baseball means expanded rosters. I asked Don Mattingly how he likes that. It's a little crazy. I'm not really in favor of it, but I mean, you play with the, within the rules right. that you have. Um, I guess if I had it for me, it would be set 25 and then activate, you know, an extra five a night or, or four or whatever. Yeah, and just to give you an extra bullpen arm. So you're playing a normal game. Now Don said, hey, but I'll take the rules as they are. It does make it a little bit different this time of year. He would have the set 25 and never change that your 25 man roster that you have let's say for September 1st that playoff roster August 31st if you will and then not add those guys but the other guys that you bring up would be on that little taxi squad if you will he mentioned four or five some have thrown out three makes more sense the other night we had eight pitchers I think and by the fifth inning the Marlins had in the other team at six and it gets a little crazy so maybe that'll change some it seems like if the Commissioner Rob Manfred is big on reducing the times of game guys that that's one of the first things they're going to look at and that, this is an easy one to change. Well all, all signs point to the new collective bargaining agreement including some sort of uh, guidelines and reduced rosters or as uh, Don Manley alluded to some sort of taxi squad where you can limit the amount of players eligible for a game. Changes for the fish. You've got Miguel Rojas out at short. Each row stays in and right. And Fernando Rodney is on the mound. Facing Ryan Zimmerman. Hey. It's a one run lead against a good offensive team. And Rodney takes the baton for Brian Ellington. This was a way in Chen start. Man, did he look good for, for four innings. Danny Espinosa drilled a three run homer. In the fifth, Nationals had a 3 2 lead. Marlins just erased that in the bottom of the sixth. Nick Wickren for two thirds. Brian Ellington for an inning. Scoreless. Three and one. That's a slow tapper. That's trouble. Rojas and he beats it. Zimmerman with an infield hit. I mean, Rojas did all he could to try to get that play converted, but ball was just hit too slowly. He had too far to go. Sim was smelling that hit. Fastball's up. By the way, if you are keeping score following on your iPad or tablet, Rodney in all of the switches is in Stanton's spot in the order. Obviously, Rodney's not going to hit. You would pinch hit at that point. Rojas eight. Itro who hit in the nine spot. Obviously still in that nine spot. So Rojas is now eight. Itro is nine. Rodney is uh, in the five spot. Yeah. Line to left, and that's a hit. Ozuna over to get it, and Fernando Rodney has given up a couple hits. Let's get a look at this last pitch, Rich. Change up. It's just up in the zone. Got to get that pitch down. You see those change ups up in your. Belt region, they just those pitches look really fat. It loses the deception up in the zone. Now the Marlins have a lot of arms in their pen. The problem that Don Manning Lee has is that he's used a lot of them in the last three games. Juan Davis is out to buy time 
for somebody to start throwing down in the pen. Looks like guys are scrambling around right now. You go back to Friday night. Remember the Marlins used eight relievers in the extra inning loss. And then they had to get to the pen in the third inning on the short start by Urania on Saturday and use four more relievers for extensive innings that on Saturday and then yesterday another short start by Andrew Kasher. And so Austin Bryce Dustin McGowan Mike Dunn David Phelps and A.J. Ramos all worked in yesterday's game. Lots of innings logged by the bullpen. Hunter Serbenka. Of course, here's Espinoza, who was struck out, homered from the other side of the plate against the lefty Chen. Bunts it. Real Muto has it. Looked at third, goes to first, gets the out. Good jump by Zimmerman because Real Muto was thinking three when he hopped out from behind home plate. Really killed that butt. Made the catcher come out to hit it and good jump by Zimmerman. Good execution by the Nationals. Steven Drew is going to pinch hit here with runners second and third and one out in the top of the seventh. Drew obviously adds a uh, veteran presence and versatility on the infield. Numbers against Fernando Rodney. Dusty's going to try to get his lefties. In there against Rodney, hopefully before the Marlins can get anybody warm. They got Drew at the plate right now, and Robinson is on deck. He's hit three pitch hit homers. Rodney Woo. comes in with a fastball, and it's 0 and 2. And that's why Drew is upset with the first pitch. And Rodney catches the zone with the second. If ever Fernando Rodney needed a, a strikeout in this appearance, it's right here. Middle infield's back. And Drew hooks it wide of first. Two again. Austin Price joins Servenka. If Rodney throws a change up right here, he's definitely got to get it down. There it is. And he got it down. And he got the strikeout. Good call, Preston. See the change of grip, gets it out front. This one drives it down through the bottom of the strike zone. That's where you get your deception with the change up. Clint Robinson now. Had a good year off the bench last year. Pinch hits for Robinson. Robinson got some big hits for the Nationals last year.
always a quality at bat off the bench. Two outs here in the seventh. Change up for a strike, one and one. Starting to see Rodney drive that change up, get it way out front now. He was letting it go a little early. Ball staying up in his own. Now it looks like he's driving it down through the bottom of the strike zone. Two and one. Top of the order. Trey Turner on deck. The two one. Good pitch. Bad language. And we apologize for that. Well, Robinson was a little upset because he was sitting on a changeup just now and actually got it and he missed it. Like he got the pitch he was looking for and then he fouled it off. That's that's where that frustration came in right there. himself into trouble and out of trouble and he gets through the seventh seventh inning stretch in Miami or three fish. Nationals. Fernando Rodney safely inside the dugout for the score of this inning. If you're a baseball fan, you need the all new Fox Sports Go app. Highlights, interviews, injury updates, scores, and instant alerts on your favorite team. Fox Sports Go. Stephen Drew at second base. And Coda Glover out of the bullpen. He looks like he throws hard. Look, if your name is Coda Glover, of course you throw hard. Is that a 91 miles an hour slider right there, Rich? What does that tell you <laughs> about his fastball if he throws a 91 He's mile an hour? He's probably upper 90s with it. Marcel Say at least 96. Ozuna Prado. There's your 97. Yeah. He, he just looked like a guy that throws hard. I've never seen the kid pitch before, but when he got on the mound, I was like, this guy throws hard. One and two.
That's a hard slider, man. 23 year old Monroe, Oklahoma, pitched at Oklahoma State. Dakota Glover getting some run in the major leagues this year. Pitched at all four levels of the Nationals uh, minor league system this year. Ozuna hangs in there at 99. Ozuna triple in the third, scored on a Yelich double. Speaking of Oklahoma State. Their head coach is Josh Holiday, who is the brother of Matt Holiday. Their father, Tom, was a, uh, a coach there as well. Yes. He was the hitting coach. And I want to say he was at North Carolina State or is at North Carolina State now as a hitting coach. Ozota pops it up. It's over the screen. Well, the Marlins have extra base hits out of uh, their power bats. Ozuna a triple, Prado a double, Yelich a double, Stanton a homer. None as beautiful as the Justin Bohr bunt hit, though, which was a key hit in the sixth. End of the bat and foul. Now, to review, the Marlins tonight are big fans of the Braves, of the Rockies, and of the Dodgers. Because in the wild, heart, wild card chase, the opponents of those three teams are all ahead of the Marlins. So the Braves are helpful in the seventh, seven to two Atlanta in New York. That's good news. Rockies eh, need some help. Cardinals have a 2 1 lead. That's bottom of the third. Gigantes and Doyers tonight, 10 10 Eastern. That's a Bumgarner Kershaw matchup, by the way. Those are always fun. Long at bat, Ozuna pops this one. That's Drew, who's at second, and Heisey, who's in right. Heisey makes the catch. Here comes Prado now. By the way, in Baltimore, Boston is beating Baltimore five to two. Red Sox have been hot. You think Hanley has uh, done some damage tonight? I like what Hanley's doing swinging with two hands on the bat now for a long time he had that one handed finish and he seems to be driving the ball more now that he's keeping both hands on the bat completing his swing Mookie Betts is 31st big poppy his 35th hey. Oda Glover has dotted that uh, outside corner at the knees with both pitches to Prado. Hanley is one for four. Prado shoots it. Drew. There to get it. And gets the outs. Well, Prado got good wood on it. Just a really nice play by Drew sliding. Coming up cleanly. And hitting Zimmerman right in the chest. Kyle Bearclaw 
in Miami's pen. Getting ready for the eight. Yelich. Yelich knocked in a run with a, a double that bounced over the wall and into the Clevelander. See the average dips in the second half but the power has had a big increase. Well that's a natural trade off. You know when you when you start looking to drive the ball more you're catching a little more more out front. You, you don't let the ball get as deep. Mm. Oof. Struck him out. Yeah let's do it. Coda Glover can throw. To the eight. A one run Miami lead. Jose Fernandez and Tanner Roark. They square off tomorrow. And look at the numbers 15 and 8 both. Roark a better ERA. Jose a lot more strikeouts and fewer walks. Nationals know Jose, the Marlins know Roark. And his career numbers, three and seven, a four two nine ERA. Flip that over, and Jose, six and zero, oh, a one one three, and he gets the start here at Marlins Park, where he's unbelievably successful. It's gonna be two 15 game winners squaring off against each other. Yeah, Jose is 28 and 2 with a 1 5 3 ERA in his career in this building. Cal Bearclaw now. And he gets the top of the order for the Nationals. Yeah, something special happens when Jose pitches in Marlins Park. I think the Marlins are trying to figure out how to. Get that to translate to more consistency on the road. Bear Claw fastball, it's popped up by Turner. Bohr and Gordon. Gordon calls him off and makes the catch. Remember, the Phillies botched that play at first base. In uh, yesterday's ball game, and that cost him. That put Marcelo Zuna on, and he ended up scoring the winning run. It's 
So you may think that's a routine out until you see it happen in front of your eyes where it's not. Well, communication is key in those types of situations. Call it and keep calling it. Bear Claw with a count two and one. You lose sight of the fact that he throws hard and has a really good fastball because of all the swings and misses he gets on the slider. There's the fastball again, and it's two and two. Well, a good consistent fastball is why he gets the swing and misses on his slider. Because you have to honor that 96 miles an hour coming in there. And he throws that slider with a good tight rotation. And you don't wait long enough to see it. Good news for the fish. The Rockies have added a run. And the Cardinals and the Rockies now 2-2. Two -two. So the Marlins need help, and they need to get hot. The Braves are beating the Mets 7-2 to tonight. Bear Claw 2-2 two and two to Worth. And a high fastball finishes off Jason Worth. Yeah, you're not going to catch up to that. That's a letter high, 96 miles an hour. It's got to be a special hitter <laughs> is the guy who hits that pitch. That's Vladimir Guerrero territory right there. Rendon now. Miguel Cabrera. Slider first strike. Bryce Harper not in the lineup tonight. Daniel Murphy not in the lineup tonight. And Harper has been struggling mightily. Murphy's red hot. He's just banged up. Bouncer. That's Rojas. And that's a nice inning from Kyle Bearclaw. Marlins Penn holding on right now to a 4 3 lead. From the Clevelander out into left field 4 3 Miami bottom eight Marlins trying to add an insurance runner to MLB.tv premium especially for those lads 
is the number one live streaming sports service available. Every out of market game as the playoff chase heats up over 400 supported devices. MLB.tv place to go for details. Swipe right on MLB.tv. Chris Johnson with the at bat here. This is the pitcher spot in Miami's lineup. So Johnson leads it off with Bohr and Real Muto to follow. Coda Glover, who was impressive in his first inning of relief, is right back out there. That Dodger Giant matchup tonight, and obviously the Marlins are hoping that the Dodgers can beat the Giants. He's got Kershaw against Bumgarner. Johnson a liner. And it's caught there by Espinosa, knuckled at the last minute. Yeah, that thing was hooking and knuckling. It's almost like a defensive catch right there by Espinosa. AJ Ramos in Miami's bullpen. Just in looking at the matchups between Giant hitters against Kershaw and Dodger hitters against Bumgarner. There's a lot of guys with 083 and 065 and 125. But there's one guy who stands out, and he's hitting second tonight for the Dodgers against the Giants, and that's Enrique Kike Hernandez. Oh, buddy, Kike. Against Bumgarner, <laughs> Kike. Is unbelievable. He's 11 of 19 with three career homers. It's a 579 average. Hey. Yeah, that's and he's done damage. So Kike's hitting second. So keep an eye on that box score and see if Fernandez has some success. He actually had two of those homers in the same game. So there you go. Bohr, a little tapper up the line. And a throw is wide, and Bohr is safe. Well, Glover kind of nonchalanted it. Zimmerman, I think, thought he was going to throw it on the other side of Bohr, on the foul side. And instead, he, he never saw it. He started on the foul side and then came back to the fair side. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of those plays where you just get sloppy with your footwork. You kind of take it for granted. Like it's he, he had every opportunity to stop his momentum, work his feet, and get that throw. He kind of threw it drifting, and cost him an error. Destin Hood's going to pitch run. You know that play is almost the exact same play, and the the guy we saw make it the best is Bartolo Colon. Similar play. And remember, Cologne threw it behind his back, kept it on the fair side, and got the runner who was? Justin Bohr. Justin Bohr. Well, there's two things you can do. You can keep your momentum going and end up throwing to the foul side of the first baseline. And hopefully your first baseman will give you a target that way. Or you just have to make sure you work your feet, stop your momentum, and keep that line of sight on the inside, on the fair side of the first baseline. Check swing by Real Muto. He didn't go. And it counts 2 and 0. Hood is running for Bohr. Johnson will probably come in and play first. Miami a one run lead, bottom eight. Real Muto fouls it back. JT is one for three. A line drive out his last time up. Nationals with uh, Ramos, Zimmerman, and Heise. That's who AJ Ramos is going to get when it gets to the top of the ninth. Pitches out. Of course, Dusty Baker does have a couple of bats, and you wonder if 
it's a complete night off for Bryce Harper. Or if Daniel Murphy and that sore caboose of his is unavailable. See if the Marlins start Hood here. Three and two with one out. He's running. Swing and a miss. Throw is high. Tag is on him, and he's out. Strike him out, throw him out. Marlins are done. In the eighth, to the ninth, A.J. Ramos with a one run lead to protect. Baseball Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Ram. Get power you can depend on at Ram Power Days. And by your South Florida Honda dealers. In Miami tonight, the Marlins have a one run lead and three outs to get. Chris Johnson, as we expected, stays in. And he's at first base. AJ Ramos. AJ Ramos will get Wilson Ramos, Ryan Zimmerman, and then Chris Heisey. Ramos saved his 37th game yesterday afternoon in Philadelphia. He also worked Friday night. Uh, what a year Wilson Ramos is having 302 21 78. He's finally healthy and you can tell. Smokes it in the gap left center field. This is trouble. Yelich going after it. Picks it off the track. Ramos cruises in with the double. And the Nationals have the tying run in scoring position with nobody out. Now, though Ramos, AJ, got the save on Sunday. Remember, he got the loss on Friday night in Philly in that, extra innings. That is the definition of middle, middle, Rich. Middle of the strike zone, middle height in the strike zone. Almost every big league hitter is going to put a good swing on that pitch. Michael Taylor a Fort Lauderdale guy. Is going to run and he's got plenty of speed. The Nationals are only carrying I believe three catchers maybe four. So they got plenty of guys that can hop behind the plate. There's your matchup. Homer 
And four hits and 12 at bats. And there's strike one. Couple hits for Zimmerman. After Heisey, who's on deck, you've got Espinoza. I know Zimmerman has been a good hitter for a long time. The numbers don't speak to it this year. Only hit 216. But you got to remember, this guy was the face of the franchise before Bryce Harper had the MVP season. Speaking of Bryce Harper, there he is. So Harper's on deck. Ball in a strike. And remember, Zimmerman, when he was drafted out of the University of Virginia, was in the Meyer Leagues for about a month and a half before he got to the big leagues. He was a fourth overall pick. And you're right, he was the face of the franchise when they weren't very good. I was actually playing with the Nationals when he made it to the big leagues. He only went on to hit like 400 for that month of the season. And he's been hitting ever since. 2 1, broken bat up the middle. Gordon goes to third, and they've got him! How about that? Michael Taylor. Yeah, that's trying to get to third. Now, he read it right. It, it didn't, wasn't caught, but a heads up play by Gordon. And that little hesitation by Taylor. It's a great play. Yeah, he had to pause just that second to make sure Ramos didn't catch it. And that's what cost him. That's a great play by D. No hesitation, throwing on the run. Got the ball quickly to Prado so Prado could make any adjustments he needed to. That's good baseball. That's an enormous play. Now the wheels are turning. You got Nieves out for a visit. The entire infield is on the mound right now. Zimmerman is the runner at first. He's a good base runner. He's not exceptionally fast. And Bryce Harper getting ready to pitch hit. There's your matchup numbers against Ramos. And so we wondered about the, the two left handed bats that Dusty Baker had. Harper at the plate, and there's Murphy on deck. And Ramos misses away. So this is the best that the Nationals have Ramos, Zimmerman, Harper, Murphy. Shallow left. Ozuna has it. And there's the second out. And here comes Murphy. You can see the season that he's had. And right now he's smoking hot. On a 14 game hit streak. In which he's hit 415. Look at that. And the damage. Nine doubles. Thirty one year old out of Jacksonville. University of Jacksonville. And of course a Mets postseason hero. National League Championship Series MVP. And a guy that absolutely clobbered the Mets this year. The irony was, as a Met, he didn't hit real well against the Nationals last season. But as a National, the Mets, he just wore them out. Ramos with a count 2 and 0. Oh. A 
Murphy going after the breaking ball. And it's two and one. Well, Murphy really turned his career and his season around last year when he started looking in. He's always been a guy that goes the other way, takes his singles to left field, doubles to left field. Occasionally, he could get into one, but he changed his whole approach. He got closer on the plate, and he just started looking middle in, and the power just started showing up. And it took until the World Series where Kansas City actually decided to pitch him away. Everybody else had pitched him like he was the same Daniel Murphy that they've been playing against in major leagues for, for years. But he became a different hitter and he actually forced his he imposed his will on the whole playoffs until he got to Kansas City. Murphy to right and it's deep. Each row back at the track. Ball game. Marlins get a very nice win to open up this three game series. Daniel Murphy just misses. Just missed it. And Ramos knows it with a big smile. And the fish take down the Nationals. <laughs> Ichiro had it in his sights. On a night where Wei and Chen was good for four and then got knocked around. The Marlins bullpen comes in and shuts the door from Whitgren to Ellington to Rodney to Bearclaw to Ramos. 4 3 is the final. And now the Marlins will head to the locker room, take a look at the scoreboard, and send Jose to the mound tomorrow. Big win tonight. You got to see Rodney pitch himself in and out of trouble. I think that was important. And you also got some good contributions from Justin Bohr, have making an impact on the bases. Well, Jose, tomorrow night, tonight, you got to give credit to the bullpen for sure. As well as John Carlos Stanton, who homered. Yelich, an RBI double. Derek Dietrich, a very large RBI double as well. Brian Ellington ends up getting the win. The loss goes to Matt Latos. He's one and one. And Ramos picks up his 38th save. And that last out, a little bit of a, a nail biter at the end. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? All right, thank you very much. Uh, with AJ Ramos here after a real nice win for the Marlins. Uh, got a little drama in the ninth inning again, AJ. Uh, la the last hit there by Murphy. Tough hitter. I mean, you really went through the teeth of their order as it turned out. Yeah, um, I expected that though. I expected to see Harper. I expected to see, I expected to see those guys. Um, but that's what you want, man. You want to face the best. Uh, I got away with with that one a little bit with that pitch down the middle to Murphy. But uh, you know, I think I'd be a good hitter because I use the whole field, man. I use the whole field when I'm closing. So. Well, it was interesting. Let's work backward. We'll talk about that one first. Because you got three-one. Drew is on deck. You have Zimmerman at first. Were you thinking, be careful with the, if you walk him, you walk him, or were you worried about putting the the potential tying run in scoring position? Well, I mean, in 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 my situation, you just don't want them to score. So I'm trying to throw the best pitches that I can at that moment. If I walk somebody, I walk somebody. I'm never worried about a walk uh, unless it's like the first hitter or something like that. But you know, in that case, you're just trying to throw your best stuff. Uh, I threw a two seam that luckily ran just enough. Uh, and he got under it. Uh, so I knew he was going to be on me because that first pitch, the first strike I threw was a backdoor slider, and he, and he swung at that very well. So I kind of had to rethink my game plan because I knew he was he had my pitches pretty and well. You could read Ichiro's body language. Off the bat, it was high and far, but you know how deep it is the right center. And when you looked at Ichiro, you, were you confident? Well, I was, and then, and then he kind of looked at the fence, yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, maybe he did get that because sometimes the ball travels pretty right. well to that side. And when he caught it, I just kind of smiled and was like, well, good thing there was some AC on out there. <laughs> Knocked the ball down a little bit. So. Uh, i tell you, a big play, obviously, in that ninth inning is what D. Gordon did on the ground ball to get the speedy Michael Taylor. And you can't really blame Taylor balls at the second base. Normally, the second baseman won't make that play. Yeah, I mean, with, with D's speed and his, his ability to, to read off the bat, 
uh, the ball off the bat. He gets great jumps, and uh, you know he bailed me out of that one. You know that's sometimes late in the season, you know you're not feeling your best, um, but that's why you got these guys behind you back there and picking each other up. That's what we've been trying to do, man. We've had a lot of injuries to key players to us, and, and we've been able to cover some slack, you know, and that's something that. Uh, Hopefully we can continue doing and put on a good run right now. You've really been battling. You got 38 saves now. I know you'd like to get 40 plus. I, we all know your your finger situation is not the greatest. You haven't made any excuses. How much of it is a battle and grit now for you versus the great talent you have? Uh, it's, it's definitely What's winning out. It's, it's definitely learning how to pitch with with what you have. Uh, you know, I don't have my plus fastball. I don't have my plus slider sometimes. So I'm out there just adjusting to everything, kind of throwing different pitches, different grips. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's September. Uh, it's my last day in my 20s today. So. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, Congratulations, know, yeah. I think. Yeah, well, yeah, I made it this far, so that's good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you know, so I'm just out there trying to do the best that I can, put put together a good inning for us, and try to keep the ball in the yard like I did today. Well, so far, last look at the scoreboard. You're getting some break. I know that's the probably not the biggest concern now, as you just want to win some games here and try to make things interesting. But you know, you never know if you pick up a game tonight, four out. And with 12 to go, could get interesting. The thing is, this is baseball. It doesn't matter how good you are or how bad you are. Any team can win any game. So somebody could go on a major losing spe uh, losing spell, and we yeah. can, you know, pull one out. The th main thing is to worry about what we can we can control, and that's winning ball games. You know, playing the best we can, and hopefully, uh, you know, an act of God, a miracle, or something to help us, you know, get to the you know postseason. So. Celebrate too much tonight because there's a few more games left. No, no, no. I'll be all right. <laughs> all right. AJ Ramos, happy 30th, a little early, but nice going. All right, save number 38 for AJ. Back to you guys. All right, thank you. It's the Nationals and the Marlins. Game one is done. And the Fish win it 4 3. Giancarlo went deep. I mean, really deep. We'll have that on Marlins Live. Great catch by a fan as well. And the Marlins come back and beat Matt Latos. And we'll check in on the scoreboard and the wild card as well. All that on Marlins Live coming up.